So I've got the screen in front of me. We are logged into salesforce.com here, and we are on an opportunity record. And we're getting ready to do business with, with Atlas here. You can see I've got a new opportunity with them. It's properly named. And all the details are nice and neat and filled out. Right, I've even got things like my quotes that I've been working so hard on, perhaps going back and forth with the deal desk on, getting appropriate approvals. And in addition to that quote, we are going to need to go ahead and kick off the, the MSA process in addition. So looking at the opportunity, there's the quote, obviously, that we have, which is very important. We want all those line items to be included on the document. We've also got our primary contact here, which is Jake Steiner. So you can be sending the agreements, whether they're for review or for e-signature, to ad hoc names and emails, or of course, you can incorporate the contacts you have already inside of Salesforce. So before we go ahead and create the agreement today, I also wanna pay attention here and notice that in the front of the screen, the DocuSign CLM tab is on this object. So at any point we can click over and see, okay, what agreements do I have with Atlas already? It looks like we have an NDA, looks like there's an amendment there. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and go ahead and kick off the process now to create a new MSA, and I'm again, Zach, I'm the, uh, I'm the associate here inside Salesforce. And without having to leave Salesforce, I can just pop up here to the top right and click Generate Master Agreement. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that button. Again, without leaving Salesforce, DocuSign CLM opens right up where the associate is able to go ahead and input any information that might be relevant to get this agreement created. It also is gonna be bringing in all that information from Salesforce automatically. So things like the opportunity name, the value, the address of your customer, right? And these things are gonna be perhaps merged into the agreement. We're also bringing in primary contact here. We've got Jake Siner. And we've got given the associate here the ability to customize some of this agreement. Now this screen in front of us is totally customizable for your individual business for your individual use cases. In this case, you, we might wanna give this person the ability to do some configuration. So we'll give them the button here to hit configure terms. And now Jake's got the ability to choose a different effective date, perhaps adjust the payment terms, termination notice, and even an option here to go ahead and select the ability to include the product index, or product appendix, excuse me. So all those line items we saw from Salesforce are being pulled into the agreement now as well. And again, this, this document, this generation screen here in front of us, this form, this can look however you need. So it can be more complicated than this with lots of different clauses to pick from and conditional logic, or it can be really straightforward with just a couple buttons that the person has the ability to select. So now that we've finished creating it, let's go ahead and preview the, the agreement itself. So hitting that little next button in the bottom left, we're actually going to preview the agreement before we send it out for review. And you know, the, the workflow that we, we mentioned with uh, going, you know, going over for review and then back and forth between legal, that workflow can be whatever you need as well. Right? We have out of the box workflows, of course, but you, know, you can of course design them to do whatever you need. So in this case, we're sending it to the customer for review. It could be that you send it to them automatically for e-signature. The sky is really the limit. So I'm just previewing my agreement here. Everything looks pretty good. We've got the customer's name up there properly. Um, let's see, the payment terms are third. Yeah, everything's good. Everything's the way I wanted it. So I'm going to go ahead here. Um, I'm, again, I'm Zach. I'm the associate. The agreement looks good. I entered it just from Salesforce. I'm going to hit save. And so what's happening now is DocuSign's workflow engine is saying, okay, cool. So this agreement was created. Now what? Right? So what happens next is it's looking at who our contact was within Salesforce. And it's saying, okay, send an email to Jake Siner for him to review this agreement. So let's pop into the inbox of Jake Siner, and you can see we've got a new email there at the top, an external review request. So Jake's gonna click on that email, and it's the one that we just received. And just like with DocuSign eSignature, DocuSign CLM doesn't require anything to install either. There's just a simple email where the client can say, yeah, I'm gonna like to review this agreement. So they, they click the link, screen pops up and it gives them some instructions on how to complete their review. So there are three easy steps, right? Download the agreement, make some edits to it. If you do make any uh, updates, go ahead and upload it back into, into this browser, right? If you're like me, you just completely skip all instructions and you just probably skip past this the first time. 
but then that's okay, right? So you're, you're skimming through the agreement. You're like, yeah, we're definitely going to need to make some edits here. Uh, you're going to notice this universal download error over to the left, and you're going to click on that button as the client. And again, I'm playing the role of Jake. We're going to go ahead and download that agreement right onto our computer. And we're just going to open that up in Word where I'm most comfortable. So again, your, your clients are going to be editing these agreements in Google, Word, Office 365, wherever they'd like, and their preferred document processor, if you will. Haven't heard that word in quite a while, I'm sure. Um, but they're opening it up in Word, which is most common. So Jake's going to go through, uh, go through Word. He's going to say to himself, you know, there are some things in here that I'd like to go ahead and change, right? Perhaps the payment terms in here, 30 days, maybe that's a little too, too short. They want to up that to 45. Maybe they also have an issue with section 1.5 where they need to go ahead and add some changes to that termination notice section. Seeing a lot of things around the catastrophic events, pandemic language recently. Uh, so let's use that as an example. Jake's gonna go ahead and change section 1.5 termination notice uh, just a little bit there. So let's just go ahead and, uh, and save this, uh, this agreement now and then upload it back into the system. And I, I, I definitely respect and understand that red lines typically take a lot longer than this. Um, and perhaps Jake has gone through with his team and you know, they've made you know, 20 different edits to this thing, right? So maybe Jake's going and he's saving this to his computer and he's calling it, let's say for example, let's just save it to the desktop here. You know, he's calling it, for example, um, MSA, Jake W edits, you know, version 55, right? And just tote doesn't put Atlas in it, just, just totally butchers the naming convention. That's okay because we at DocuSign, our system knows the difference between those two different, those two different documents. So let's go ahead and re-upload the agreement, right? So Jake has gone through he's, with his team, he's done those, those red lines. He's gonna pop back into his browser. He's gonna go, go seek out that email that he, re, he saw before, and he's gonna hit the next button and upload that document. Now, of course, Jake could email this back, right, to Zach or anybody else at Tally and they could check the document in manually. Um, but today, Jake's gonna follow the nice automated path and he's gonna go ahead and, and grab this file and upload, and upload a new agreement here. Let's see, which one are we doing? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and upload that agreement that we just edited, hit next and hit finish. All right. So what's happening now as Jake has hit finish, right? The workflow is kicking in again. It's saying, all right, the external review step with the customer is done. What's next, right? So automatically, DocuSign is going to route this agreement to Lauren in legal, or it could route to anybody. It could route to a group of attorneys in legal, and the person with the least amount of tasks already assigned to them is the one who gets assigned the task. So popping into the tasks view here, say I'm in legal, I of course would also get an email uh, with a new task to take action on. But we've got a new task here, a legal review for Atlas. On behalf of Lauren, we're going to go ahead and click on that task and, and see what needs to happen here. So the document preview is going to open up right from within the web application here. And you can see on the left hand side, um, we've got some instructions for our legal reviewer, right? Please review and route the MSA as needed. It's even calling out some of the changes to the agreement. So when Jake was making his, we'll call them red lines because they were red lines, but he wasn't even using tracks changes. So they were just, you know, regular changes. Our system's going to be able to call out those changes visually here in a moment when the documents are done comparing because we can compare with the previous version, but we're also able to call out tracked content in there. So we know that there was a change to section 1.5. We also know that there was a change to section 1.6 and that the payment term was changed from a 30 to a 45. And so we can see here the visual red lines what that Jake made the change to 1.5 and made that change to 1.6. And again, our system is smart enough if you so choose and want to track those, con those pieces of content to do so, which I've done here as an example. Now, I also want to make sure that we're remembering that as this agreement goes through its entire life, life cycle, we're capturing attributes around it, right, which is metadata. So we're capturing what type of document it is. We're ca capturing the start and end dates. We're capturing the value, right? These things are pulled from Salesforce. They're also pulled from the edits that our client made. 
We're also capturing the termination notice. We're capturing the payment term as a piece of metadata, and we're calling it out as 45 here. Before that, it was 30. Even the attributes have the ability to change in real time as your customers and as yourself are editing content back and forth. So all that's captured, all that's captured in the DocuSign system, and it's also captured within Salesforce. So just a moment as I pop back into Salesforce, we're gonna see that under, underneath CLM, if we refresh this screen, we can see that the description of this agreement, the MSA we're working on, is with internal review. So if I'm the salesperson or the associate or whoever, and I'm in Salesforce, I just pop over here and I can see at any moment that it's with our legal group. There's also a contract record that's created in addition to this agreement, which is gonna capture all that same metadata. So at the end of all this, when we go ahead and look at the contract, any changes are gonna be reflected and pushed into Salesforce. So a bit of a tangent, but just wanted to call out all those great things that, are, that have just happened as we've gone through um, and, uh, and created and then had that document edited. So right, so our customer made some changes, right? And we're seeing them on our screen in front of us. So what we can do now is we can make a decision and take action on this task. Of course, we have lots of options that we need to do for this task, right? Do we need to send it to back to our customer? Do we need to send this up to finance? Do we need to set, select some ad hoc reviewers to then go ahead and review this, maybe more senior than myself? Or are we ready to send this out for signature? Well, because there are these changes here, and I can visibly see them here as well, I'm gonna go ahead and pop up to the right, top right, hit edit, and open this agreement up with its red lines. So I'm very comfortable. I'm an attorney that who just really likes Microsoft Word. I could open this up in Office 365 if I wanted, but I'm gonna go ahead and open this up using DocuSign's plugin for Word. So you might've seen it really quick in the bottom right there, but we do have a plugin there and the, uh, the document um, showed that that document was, uh, was being downloaded on behalf using DocuSign Edit. So here is the agreement that was uh, edited by Jake and now I'm legal at uh, Tally and I'm gonna go ahead and, and perform those counter red lines. Now, before I do that though, I'm actually gonna run DocuSign's artificial intelligence scorecard across this agreement. DocuSign's product for this is called Analyzer. And I'll just quickly make sure I'm logged into Analyzer. Analyzer is a plugin for Word that leverages the artificial intelligence clauses and machine learning that we've done through our Insight product that allows us to apply any sort of risk automatically to this document in front of us. So I'm gonna use my MSA scorecard and automatically analyze this agreement, right? So the document's gonna initialize, it's gonna look through the whole thing, it's gonna go ahead and fetch some of those, those clause libraries and make sure that these, these, this text in here looks the same, looks how it should, right? Document scorecard is being analyzed. It's going back and saying, hey, where's there some force majeure language that was edited? Was there something that needs to be changed? What, uh, what is the new scorecard based on what's been changed? So just give that a moment to, to do its, its analysis and we will see the score in a moment. All right, so scorecard's coming up here. And again, it wasn't you know click of a button, but uh, maybe certainly uh, some time savings here compared to having to go through this all manually with a fine tooth comb especially at uh, maybe end of a long day, for example. So here we can see, I mean, this was our paper. I don't expect any crazy risks, but over on the right, we can see that there is a medium uh, risk score here. And if I click right on it, I can go right to where it is in the agreement. And it's highlighting section 1.5, which contains a, a red line from my customer. So in this case, I'd like to use our preferred legal language. So Analyzer, DocuSign Analyzer has identified that there is a risk. I'm gonna go ahead and click on these three buttons and I'm gonna insert this primary language right from DocuSign's own clause library, which is used to create agreements in CLM and then used to analyze them with our artificial intelligence. And we'll just clean that document up. So we just inserted that in there nice and neat. And now we're gonna go ahead and, and be nice today and accept these changes uh, on behalf of, of our client. We'll accept 45 days. So again, kind of condensing the counter red line uh, process here, but you get the idea. We've performed artificial intelligence to go ahead and quickly figure out what needs to be changed. Is there a risk to these red lines? And then I was able to insert language without having to copy and paste it from another agreement or type it out from memory right from Analyzer. So what I'm gonna do now, 
that I'm finished, I'm actually just going to hit Command S or Control S, uh, excuse me, uh, hit Control S, Command S if you're on a Mac. And you'll notice in the bottom right, if you are savvy, that there was that little pop-up saying, hey, DocuSign um, Edit went ahead and uploaded that new version. So if we want to go ahead and refresh the screen, we're actually going to see that we're on a new version of this agreement, the same one that we just finished at uh, counter redlining. Right now we're on version four. And the whole time, the naming convention has stayed consistent, even though Jake butchered it and called it like version 55. So we've, we've essentially finished our counter red line, and now it'd be appropriate for us to hit this drop down and initiate the signature process. Let's go ahead here and hit next. And that's gonna go ahead, workflow's gonna say, all right, great, this next step was, was fired off, what's next, right? So it goes over to Jake, our customer, to go ahead and begin signing. Let's go ahead and pop into Jake's inbox. We'll have a new email here very shortly. All right, right at the top, Zach Woodard has requested your signature. So again, just like you're familiar with DocuSign, just like DocuSign e-signature, just like DocuSign CLM, nothing needed to install. Just simply hit review document and we can go ahead and agree to sign. So yeah, same document, right folks? So here's the 45 days. Right, there's that change. And then here's that, that line we entered in here in 1.5 uh, using our clause library. So we're going ahead and signing. Let's just finish this up. Jake has finished signing. And I'm not gonna do a counter signature on behalf of Tally today, um, but what is gonna happen um, in a moment, uh, the system, you know, a couple seconds, the, the, the uh, agreement is now saying agreement awaiting signature, and that will change to a nice signed PDF here in a moment. And what we are going to have happen is on the contract record here, if I open that up, the information that was changed, right? So we had the 30, the payment terms were changed from 30 to 45. You notice on the contract record, which is related to that opportunity, we have the payment terms automatically brought in as 45, as net 45 brought right into the contract. So again, any changes that are happening within the document can be tagged inside DocuSign CLM, and then updated and pushed into Salesforce all in one motion. So let's just pop back into, um, into the, uh, the opportunity record here, and we can see that, that now that agreement is approved and signed and stored right from within Salesforce. So just a quick little recap, that, that was the demo, but just a quick little recap of what we did, right? Zach kicked everything off right from within Salesforce, generated the agreement, attached the line items from the quote, Went over to Jake, Jake performed his counter red lines, changed the payment terms from a 30 to a 45. Lauren picked up the task, went ahead and ran the risk scorecard using artificial intelligence across the document, made, made an exception on the 45, net 45. We inserted a clause right from our clause library, sent it to Jake who signed it, and then the agreement ended up right where we wanted it, right from within Salesforce. And of course, other things can happen next, right? The opportunity can automatically close and win, and other downstream processes can, can take action 